Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another very exciting night of high school hockey. Tonight's matchup pits the Hill Murray Pioneers against your Benilde St. Margaret's Red Knights. This, of course, is a rematch of last year's state title game. And uh, I'm here, as always, with Jay Copeland and David Nelson, my partners in crime. Jay, what can we expect to see tonight? I think you're going to expect to see a very physical game. These two teams, Hill Murray is looking for revenge. Benilde's looking to prove that they're still the same powerhouse they were last year. We're going to see a lot of physical game, probably a high score and a fair, too. That's so I'm going to predict for this game. And David, as we look at these teams, these are two extremely good teams. They got the scoring, the defense, and the goaltending all together. What is the key for the Red Knights to winning this game? Well, I think the key is uh, starting out uh, starting out hot. I think getting a, an early goal is key to the success. I think they want to, uh, you know, maybe strike a couple memories in this Hill Murray team, specifically John Dugas, who had to deal with Grant Bessie last year, scoring five goals, some of them just absolutely ridiculous. So I think that the Benilde offense against the, uh, excuse me, the Hill Murray defense is really going to be the matchup to look for tonight. Fantastic. And as we get set to get underway, we thank you folks for joining us here on Park 16 TV. It'll be fun. It'll be high scoring. It'll be physical. Get ready for this. Puck's about to drop. Puck's down and the Red Knights take possession. That's Bessie. In through the neutral zone, dumps it into the offensive zone. Go around the boards now. Ooh, and a massive hit behind the board to start the game, and Hill Murray gains control. They knock it out of the zone, skate into the Red Knights offensive zone, and Andrew Sprang makes a nice early save there. You know, it looks to me so far as the Hill Murray Pioneers come out really energized, two big hits put on. Uh, the Red Knights expect a very physical game all night. And of course, one of the people that the Red Knights are gonna have to shut down all night is number 21 there, Zach Laval. He is the Pioneers' highest scorer, uh, and he's their captain, and he's just an all-around great player. I remember last year for the uh, state title game, he was just getting into scrap after scrap, trying to energize his team, and I think shutting him down is one of the keys for this Red Knights team. Easily, I think if you take away Zach LaValle, you probably have yourselves a good victory there. But the Red Knight defense is so young, they've got a little less inexperience, but Ken Paul is putting his talent out there for the Knights, so we'll have to see how they play tonight. That's why I'm watching. And of course, Jay's referring to BSM's head coach, Mr. Ken Pauly, and one of the most winningest coaches, and I would dare say, Minnesota high school history. Uh, we were looking at his resume, and it is just ridiculous how many conference titles he's won. Uh, He's won. He won last year's state title. He won the 99 state title with that team with Troy Riddle, who was a legend back then. And uh, he's just a great coach. And if you get the chance to play for him, you're going to become a better player. Yeah, you know, we talked to, uh, you know, people like TJ Moore, Grant Bessie, Patrick Graham, all the big seniors on the team. They said they love him to death. They do anything for him. And he's just an all around great coach. As this one is iced early on, so we will have a face off in the Hill Murray zone. And uh, I know the game just started, guys, uh, but what are your first impressions here? First impression is that it's going to be a really evenly matched game. Hill Murray's coming out a lot better than they did in the state title game this year. Tough to see if they can give the Red Knights a run for the money. That's freshman Alec Bear on the faceoff there for the Red Knights. He's been outstanding this year as a freshman, already playing on second line, already having two goals two games into the season. Well, he's one of three freshmen on this Red Knight team, and it's just ridiculous. He came over from St. Louis Park, and uh, he had three points and was a plus four in that game on Thursday. For a freshman, that's ridiculous. Of course, he was outshined by teammate Spencer Noss on the same line, who scored four goals in that Burnsville game. He comes, over, he comes over from Blake, and he brings a lot of aspects right, to Chase the game. Jungles here. Oh, and it's knocked down by Dugan. Great shot from Chase Jungles. You can see the players are already trying to get into it. Look at Alec Bear going out with another Hill Murray player. Let's watch the replay on this one. It was a great pass, and he and shoots it right in the chest, so Dugas is able to get a good grab on that one. The thing that's most impressive about that to me is his patience. He didn't go for the shot right away. He waited to see if something opened up. That's a great player right there. So we're about to get the face off here with uh, number 23, TJ Moore, excuse me, and uh, wins the face off for the Red Knights. Battle along the end boards there. Pass behind the net. Back to Moore. Shot. Oh, a stop by Dukas. It fell down. It was in front of the net. And uh, 
Back the other way for the Pioneers. And a great save by Andrew Sprang. Quick glove there by Andrew Sprang. I saw it all the way. Just a fantastic save there on the slide from Sprang. That's a really nice play. And he's got to step up big ever since the departure of Justin Qualley to Hopkins. So if you look right there, he just gets a great piece of it and is able to glove it right before anything else can happen. Andrew Sprang, of course, number 30, BSM's goalie. Uh, he is a senior, but he's a transfer from Shattuck St. Mary's. Anyone, if you know the Shattuck name, you know that it's synonymous with great hockey. And so uh, Mr. Ken Pauly and really the entire BSM community is hoping that they've found a gem in Andrew Sprang. Yeah, definitely tough losing Justin Qualley this past offseason and transferring over to Hopkins. And Sprang coming up huge there. And oh, getting physical. Some shoving in front of the net. Hey, you can already tell this game's getting easily physical. Oh, and that was Johnny Austin, a, nut, a junior. And uh, watch here as Johnny Austin up. comes in and levels him. You know, I'm going to be honest, I don't like that play from Austin. There's no, he could have easily gotten penalized for that. No reason to take a stupid penalty early on. I think point, Peter. he's going to be hearing from Coach Pauly definitely in between the periods. We got one of the captains on this, Mr. T.J. Moore on the faceoff. Wins for the Red Knights. Goes back to Patrick Graham. Dumped out of the Red Knights zone. Ah, uh, but dumped back in by the Pioneers. Number 15 there, Peter Heimbold, another freshman. One of the three on the team. He's looked pretty good for a freshman. Obviously, there are still a few learning curves, but uh, for, for, uh, for a freshman, he's looked pretty dang good. Yeah, one of the things I really love about this hockey team is how their ability to recruit you know, new players. If you look, they got good transfer students this year in Spencer Noss and Johnny Austin. Even Alec Bear, they tried a couple of quality players from some top-notch teams like Blake and St. Louis Park. And of course, finding transfer students and recruiting has always been one of BSM's strong suits. They have a ridiculous hockey program. You look at some of these banners, uh, they, they've won so many championships or titles, conference titles, state titles, division titles in the past decade, 15 years. It's ridiculous. So who wouldn't want to play for a franchise that's, dare I say, as storied as the yeah. Red Knights? You know, and going back to the transfer thing, last year, uh, Benilde St. Margaret's inherited a great player like Jonah Johnson, actually came from Hill Murray and provided some great intensity on the defensive side of the puck. Uh, and you know, uh, speaking with Coach Pauly about his defense, he said they are young, but they're very experienced, losing eight players last year. Uh, you know, he's, he's very excited about the youth core coming up. Now it's icing on the Red Knights, so it comes back into their own zone. Face off here, won by the Red Knights and carried out of the defensive zone through the neutral zone into the offensive ice. Chase jungles here, hit along the end boards, loses possession. Pioneers gain possession, they come out with it. Somebody's lost a stick there, that is Chase jungles. And a shot wide by the Pioneers, who have had some great pressure early on. Sprang coming up with a stick on it. That was Hale passing it out of the zone. And offsides there, so Red Knights have to circle back out of the zone. And here come the Pioneers, dump it into the zone. Sprang hopped his stick. That could have been really dangerous if a Pioneer had gone for it. That's true, but there wasn't, there wasn't much in the area, so you got to see how, how well the Pioneers are playing so far. And a goal! That is T.J. Moore, the senior, one of the captains. Beautiful goal. That's where Mama keeps the cookies, gentlemen. T.J. Moore, a phenomenal shot. Let's watch this replay. Great three-on-two opportunity here. Watch Lobo look for Moore on top of the slot here. Just fires it right past Dugas. Big goal for the Red Knights to start this game. You know, that set up, though, by amazing. Daniel Labaski, amazing. That is textbook. I don't think you could play it any more beautiful than that. You can see how much that this, this top line has played together for four years, so they know each other so well and just to come out here and execute. It's like playing with your brother. You're going to exactly. play better with somebody you're familiar with. Beautiful, one nothing Red Knights, 12 and a half minutes to go in the first. Thanks for joining us. Oh, and a dangerous shot there as it hit the outside of the post there. And Red Knights knock it out of the zone. I expect as this game goes on, we're going to see a lot of neutral zone play. Uh, both these teams are really good at adjusting on the fly. They can change what needs to be done to each other's uh, strategies. And 
It'll be a, a, a big coaching game, a lot of strategy needed. So far it's been a really great hockey game between both teams, even though it's already up. The Red Knights are already up by one goal. It's been very physically matched. There's been a lot of physical confrontations after the whistle and a lot of just really great hockey. Each team hasn't really spent much time in the neutral ice. They've mostly spent either defending their zone or in the other team's zone trying to get a good goal. Now with Seth Chumley, Chums, passing it into the offensive zone there. And like we said, a lot of heavy hits here early on, and that's only going to pick up as this game goes on. You can, you can tell how much the Hill Murray players are still holding the resentment from the Red Knights after what happened last last early spring in the championship game. They were outscored 5-1. to one. Well, one of the things I'm interested to see is uh, Grant Bessie, the captain, senior, number 12, scored all five of the Red Knights' goals in that game. If he puts one on the board here, I'm really interested to see how the fans react, both from BSM, but particularly Hill Murray. I'm interested to see how the goalie will react. After Bessie put up his first goal, up pretty much was all downhill there for John Dugas. We'll have to see how he's responding. Of course, that's Mr. Grant Bessie, uh, 14th in career goals in the state of Minnesota with 118. Can you say, wow, that's ridiculous for anyone. That's pretty amazing, and he's still got one more. He's still got this last season, so we'll see how much further he can climb on that point. A that potential uh, potential Mr. Hockey candidate, and I think he has a shot. I think he's got a great chance. I think he really brings a lot to this team. It's not it's not just about him, but he's one of the one of the quality caliber players, as Coach Pauly talks about it. Yeah, you know, you look at Bessie's stats early in the season here, three goals, three assists. Uh, you know, three goals a game. So, you know, you look at him, I think he's definitely a potential Mr. Hockey uh, for Minnesota. And, of course, Hill Murray has one of those players, too, in Mitch Slattery. Uh, in three games, he has four goals and two assists. That's pretty good. As we got an interference call coming here on Chase Jungles. So the Pioneers will go on a two-minute power play, and... Uh, See if they can even it up here. Well, we all know what happened last year when the Red Knights went on the penalty kill in the uh, state championship game. Grant Bessie scoring three of his five goals in that title game on the penalty kill. It will be interesting to see how aggressive he decides to play on the penalty kill here tonight. It'll be interesting to see how the Red Knights do on the penalty kill. Last Thursday at Burnsville, three of Burnsville's four goals came when the Red Knights were shorthanded. So we'll have to see how they're doing ever since the departure of eight defenders last season. And a great save by Sprang there. You could see number 28, Mitch Slattery, who, who we just talked about, trying to screen Andrew Sprang. And uh, I think that's one of the only ways you're going to beat this guy because he is, uh, the, the amount of movement he gets in the crease, uh, the way he plays, he's really good. It's just ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, and you know, they're going to they're gonna be relying on Andrew Sprang to get him. Uh, through this one, you know, you look at last year how Quali was able to fend off some of those Hill Murray attacks. I remember last year uh, in that game there was a two on O and a beautiful backdoor pass by a pioneer, and he was able to slide over and snag it with the glove. So they're really going to be relying on Andrew Sprang this season. I think easily, but it's going to be hard for him to match the quality caliber that Justin Quali brought to the table, especially during the state game the last season. The one thing with Andrew Sprang is that he's a solid goalie, but he's a butterfly goalie, which means he's moving all over the place. And there is nothing more terrifying for a fan than a butterfly goalie. Exactly, because you never know where he's going to be and where that puck's going to be at the same time. Exactly. As we got a, uh, a nice uh, setup here going for the Pioneers in the offensive zone. They're making the Red Knights collapse around their strategy here. And a nice save by Sprang. Getting a little push there from number 17, Willie and Brown. There the will be a penalty on 17. Absolutely. Oh, that's spraying in the chest. That is some roughness or an unsportsmanlike conduct call. One of the two. I couldn't that's see. That's an easy call. You see him just get him right in the chest. Spraying responds, but it's only because he was challenged by 17, Willie Brown. So. And that will negate the uh, power play. It'll be four on four here for a minute seven. And then the Red Knights will have 53 seconds of the power play, which, if we know anything about the Red Knights, they are dangerous on the power play. Very easily. They play, play really well on the power play. They play really well at even strength, and they even play well shorthanded. So, so we'll have to talk about when we talk about the Red Knights. Spencer Noss, a good try from uh, the side of the net there. Let's talk about Spencer Noss for a minute. A transfer from Blake. Came in with over 40 goals last season. Last, uh, last Thursday at Burnsville, or at home against Burnsville, he put up four goals. 
And which is pretty amazing. He fits, Co he fits Coach Pauly's system so well. Just the kind of ethics he has for working, the skill level, the determination. And he's a guy that can slot in on any line and be effective. And here we go, another three on two opportunity for the Red Knights. We'll see if they can capitalize this. Bobo looked like he was getting a hook there. No call. You know, I talked to the grandfather of Spencer Noss, and he, he told me the reason he wanted to go to the Red Knights was because he could have great line teammates. Even though he wouldn't be on the first line, he wanted teammates who would make him a better player and, you know, show his skills. That's a great save there by Andrew Sprang on Colton Greeter, number 15. Yeah, there's a way to use your head right off of Sprang's face mask. <laughs> Lucky break for the Red Knights as they go on the power play. Wonder if Sprang used to be a soccer player, had butt that thing away. <laughs> and it is now a 45 second power play for the Red Knights. Let's see if they can convert. Chase jungles out of the box here and he does work right away. He goes and knocked out of the zone. That almost went out. That could have been a delay of game call, but luckily stayed in for the Pioneers as the Red Knights regroup in their own end. Peter Heimbold passing it forward. Gives it up to the Pioneers, though, who clear once again. Red Knights, maybe one final push here. They got 16 seconds left in the power play. See if they can make something happen. And you know, one of the things I'm seeing early on here from the Pioneers is they're really forcing the Red Knight attack to the side of the ice, not letting them get to the middle. Uh, nice strategy there by Coach Black. That's a great defensive strategy. Don't let them set up anything easy in the front. Don't get that dirty goal. Uh, sometimes the best goal to get, but uh, if you can keep them out, why not? As I say by Dugas there, uh, John Dugas, number one, the goaltender for Hill Murray, um, kind of playfully unloved by this BSM crowd. Uh, what, do, what do you think about that, David? Well, I, I, you know, I, uh, going back to last year's state title game, I think they stole a couple of chants from the, the Go, Golden Gopher faithful. And, uh, you know, Vanille, you know, they have a very, um, we're going to go ahead and say spirited fan base. You know, they like to, they tried, and, uh, well, I guess they succeed in getting inside Dugas' head early in that game. Uh, but, yeah, they do have a very interesting relationship with uh, Hill Murray goalie John Dugas. But, hey, that's a good strategic advantage, right? If you can get inside his head, why not? Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and say it. That's a sign of a really good fan base right there. <laughs> if there's anything I know about BSM is that they love their hockey team. At the Pioneers. Oh, and a rocket there by 27. Sam Becker goes just wide. We got a helmet lost on 25 there. That's Nick Austin, one of the freshmen. And you know, one of the one of the things I'm noticing here early is uh, the Hill Murray Pioneers' ability to try and screen Sprang. I think that's their offensive strategy: is put a body in front of them and make a miss. I saw Dustin Kruger there on that shot, right in front of Sprang. Uh, good strategy for Hill Murray. As this will come outside the zone here, this will be T.J. Moore on the faceoff against Willie Brown, and Brown wins, and it's dumped into the Red Knight zone. Uh, ben Newhouse got a glove on that. That could have been potentially dangerous. If it goes over the boards in your defensive zone, as you know, it is a uh, delay of game penalty. Luckily, the Red Knights got a bit of luck there and just kind of were able to not have it go. True that. As the puck comes out to Bessie, and he is dangerous with the puck. As he tries to dance around, broken up. Nice stick work there by Lobo to keep the drive alive as, as he shoots wide. Bessie tried to screen Dugas and the crease to no avail as the Pioneers push over into the offensive zone. This is Johnny Austin going, gathering that puck up and skating out of the defensive zone, dumping it forward. Ooh, and a little short for Bessie. Bessie had gotten that. He could have had a potential breakaway, but instead it is offsides. We thank you once again for joining us this evening. Hill Murray Pioneers against your Benilde St. Margaret's Red Knights. Red Knights winning 1-0 off of a beautiful goal early on by T.J. Moore, the senior center. As we get a face-off here with Zach Hale, and he wins the face-off. Dumped into the Pioneer zone. Yeah, that's one other thing I took from uh, this, this week's earlier game at Burnsville. They were very, the Red Knights are very good on face-offs. They won over two-thirds of them, which is pretty impressive. So I think they can easily do that. They can get more chances and stay in the offensive zone. Of course, this Red Knights team. Oh, and a breakaway here for the Pioneers. 
And a beautiful oh, save a, by Sprang. What a deflection. Oh, my right God. There. That was lovely. And there's a penalty. That vision, that awareness by Sprang, and the penalty here is on the Red Knights here. Let's take Heibold. another look at this. A two on nothing. Just poor defensive play. Pass across Sprang, able to get the glove, the pad on it, keeps it down. And that is a nice play. And you know, I think if Littler, number 19 for the Pioneers, holds onto that puck and maybe waits a little bit, I think a hole opens up on the side of Sprang. So, you know, maybe next time don't pass that puck, hold onto it and shoot and score. But you gotta admit, that was a beautiful play by Andrew Sprang. And here for the second time of the night, we get to see the Red, Red Knight, sorry, penalty kill. They are one for one on the penalty kill tonight. And of course, special teams, that's one of the things that coach Ken Pauly prides himself on. Not only the ability to kill off a penalty, but to get shorthanded goals. As you got some of your top players out there, you got Bessie out there, you got TJ Moore out there. You got uh, Patrick Graham, who's just the nicest guy. As the Pioneers, unable to get anything really set up here, I'm kind of confused as to the Red Knights' defensive strategy here. They don't seem to be doing a whole lot, but it's surprisingly effective. So good for them. Oh, oh and it's up. That could have been dangerous. Looked like he had uh, Lebowski streaking for a breakaway there, but uh, luckily the pass was deflected into the crowd. So they'll set up in the neutral zone. As we got Spencer Nass on the faceoff, wins it for the Red Knights, and cleared the length of the ice. Of course, because it is a penalty kill, there's no icing. As the Pioneers, they haven't even gotten a shot off yet on this power play. You know, I'm right with you. I don't understand Ken Pauling's defensive strategy here, but whatever it is, it's absolutely working. They're playing some great man-on-man -man defense. And that shot goes wide just there. wide. And Johnny Austin will throw it down the length of the ice that should kill off a good portion of this power play. 15 seconds left on it. Oh, number 26 for Hill Murray streaking in. Nice move, shoot, scores! And Hill Murray will respond on the power play. Power play goal there with eight seconds left on the power play. Uh, hey, still counts. We are tied up at one. And that is just a defensive lapse by the Red Knights there. You cannot allow the man to get that deep into the zone. When you have four defenders, you're right there. Again, it was a different strategy by Ken Pauling. It worked out for... And that is Tyler Funk. That'll be his second of the season. You know, it's two points on the season, both on goals. This thing is notched up at 1, 3.30 to go here in the first. And Sprang will glove that down. There'll be a face-off coming up. As we got some playful banter going back and forth here between the fan bases. One of the, uh, one of the fun parts of high school sports, any sport, you got to enjoy the, uh, the fun, the fun taunting. So we got the face-off coming up here, won by the Red Knights. Pass along the end boards there. And taken over by the Pioneers. A shot goes just wide of Sprang. Play behind the net. Forward to Jungles, who passes and clears the zone. And a swing and a miss by Alex Bear. And Pioneers control. Pass behind the net to Kruger. Unable to get anything going there. It'll come out of the zone. Red Knights going ahead here. We got Spencer Knott with the puck. Knott in front. Ooh, and unable to get the shot off. Looks like he was looking for a cross crease pass and a nice poke in. Unable to get it. As this will come out of the zone. And we got a high sticking call here on Hill Murray. So he'll go to the sin bin for two. 
Red Knights going on the power play. That's number 27, Sam Becker, in for two minutes. 240 left here. Uh, you know, this could be key if the Red Knights get a goal here. If you can hold them off for them for 40 seconds, it's key to go into the locker room with the lead. I mean, I think it's I think it's all coming down to momentum here. You know, that's a huge momentum goal for the Pioneers, and I think you're right, Peter. If the Red Knights are able to retake the lead here, it's going to be huge heading into the first intermission. We got some good perimeter setup. Oh, and it comes out of the zone. That is just a poor, poor play there by the Red Knights. They have to regroup outside. Bessie coming into the zone with a puck, looking for a pass. Unable to find anything. Great defense by the Pioneers as they get it across. And uh, able to keep it in the zone. That's impressive. We're coming up here. Oh, and meant for TJ. Unable to get a stick on it. A and a two-on-one here for the Pioneers. Pioneers two-on-one. Sprang coming up with the leg save. Stuck the leg pillow out, able to knock it away. And here come the Red Knights. Here comes Lebowski with the puck. Lebowski had his pocket picked there. Unable to get the shot off. It is cleared by the Pioneers. Sprang comes out and plays it forward. Down the length of the ice. Intercepted by the Pioneers. Pioneers into the zone. Tries to dangle. Sprang gets a stick on it. Makes the save. And the Red Knights survive. Trying to get something set up here. Red Knights are the ones on the power play. Uh, as it looks now, it could be kind of confusing because the Pioneers have had two great short-handed opportunities here. And yeah, all comes down to momentum. The Pioneers are really flying right now after that great goal from Funk. And this is Jungles with the puck. Caught up along the boards there. And the Red Knights gain control. Back along the blue line, looking for a shot. A shot and a save by Dugas. That was Grant Bessie, who is a sniper, just dangerous from any corner of the ice. We got 20 seconds left in the power play, one minute left in the period. Red Knights trying to get a goal here. Dugas gets the paw up, bats it away. And we got Bessie with the puck, trying to get something going here. Comes to Knox. Knox across to Lebowski. Lebowski shot and deflected away by Dugas. Along the boards, it's getting more physical here, gents. As we got Bessie shot to no avail. And the Pioneers were clear. Power play is over, even strength. 30 seconds left in this period. And you know, I'm really trying to think who this reminds me of. The Hill Murray Pioneers are very excited to watch Bessie fail. Uh, you know, just, it goes back to how much, you know, these schools seem to hate each other. You know, when you look at the fans uh, being active in this game so far from both sides. As the Pioneers try to wrap around, Sprang kept his leg pillow stiff, unable to get anything in, and the period comes to an end. Hill Murray Pioneers won. The Nilt St. Margaret's Red Knights won. After one, thanks for joining us. Come back after the break. It may have just been a summer job. But for me, it was training. Now I'm an Air Force pararescue man, and my job is to save lives. Make the right choices today and be ready for the challenges tomorrow. This message is brought to you by the U.S. Air Force. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the St. Louis Park Rec Center for the site of tonight's matchup in between the Hill Murray Pioneers and the Benilde St. Margaret's Red Knights. Uh, the, first the first period ended 1-1 one one, uh, with goals coming from Benilde St. Margaret's own T.J. Moore. And then it was knotted up later from Hill Murray's T.J. Funk, excuse me, Tyler Funk, uh, off the power play. So now I look at my buddies <laughs> Peter Best and Jay Copeland. Uh, guys, what are you hoping to see out of the second period, and what do you guys uh, think will be the decider of this game? I honestly think that we're going to see a lot more physicality, but we're also going to see just some really good improved play by both teams. And I'm sure going into the locker room, someone had to say something to inspire the team. What do you about you, Peter? What do you think we're going to see? Uh, the Red Knights, they looked good, but they didn't look as good as they could have. Uh, they had some mental lapses in their play. Uh, in their positioning, they need to fix that up. Hill Murray will take advantage of those weaknesses. 
So they need to close that up, and they need to do it quickly. Just like that, Andrew Sprang, you can't drop something like that when Hill Murray's rushing the zone. That's perfectly what I'm talking about. And exactly. That would be number 17 here for Hill Murray. Willie Brown almost had a chance at a goal. Here's Bessie in front of the Hill Murray net. Hill slipped the shoot. And it's, oh, I thought it was scored there by TJ, or excuse me, Dan Lebowski had a wide open net here on the short side. Unable to finish his sprint, kicks one away into the side of. Here's Lebowski with it up ahead to Bessie. Bessie's tripped up by number 25. That will be Ryan Black. Moore kicks it ahead to Bessie, who fires over, and it's intercepted. Great defensive play there by Sam Becker. Becker will move it through the zone, off the stick of Johnny Austin. Right there for a one-timer is number 21, Zach Lavelle. Of course, we mentioned Hurley, his contributions to the game. Uh, Jay, early thoughts on the period about a minute in. Well, it looks like it's pretty much the same thing. The Hilmer Pioneers are really pursuing. The Red Knights are sort of lapping and kind of relying on luck right now. So the Red Knights really need to play better defense if they want to win this game. We've seen a lot of missed opportunities from both teams on that uh, that last one time that went past. If the puck would have been a little lower, number 28, um, Mitch Slattery would have easily been able to hit it right past Sprang. So both these teams really need to capitalize on those errors and not not make more mistakes. You have to be pretty much flawless to beat each other. And that one will be covered up by John Dugas as both fan bases are trying to invigorate their teams. Let's watch this play here. Good looking shot from Alec Bear just falls right in front of uh, Dugas and he's able to get the save as Nas will take the draw. Able to clear. Chase down, that's Heim, Heimbold. And now it's over to Nas. Nas over to Jungle. Jungle skates in his own and fires one on Dugas, unable to get anything. Now it's Bear with the puck. Bear in the corner. And that one is taken away by the Pioneers. Shot up ahead to Funk was the lone goal in the game. Now it's picked up by Spencer Noss. It's a three on two opportunity for the Red Knights as he's rocking one towards the net and that one is deflected. Red Knights really need to tighten up here. They're playing really loose and they're not really looking cohesive as a team. A turnover right there. You can't do that. As a team, if you want to be good, you cannot do that. And that right there was just a a young player's mistake. Ben Newhouse gave the puck away right in front of the net. And that right there is a Cardinal Sinanaki and never pass it in front of the net. Very fortunate that this game is still knotted up one to one. I understand if uh, something like that happens at the end of a period, but they just got back from a break. They have fresh legs, they're rehydrated. They should not be making mistakes like that because eventually one of those is gonna kill them. I, can, I completely agree. And you can again see more missed opportunities for both teams. And Murray had a great interception there, but Andrew Sprang comes up big with the save. And this one being chased down by Benilde's Zach Hale. And it's pushed ahead, played back up there. Chumley will fire a shot on Dugas. Dugas gloves it and holds on. Fourteen twelve left in this second period as we have a face-off now between the Pioneers and the Red Knights in the Pioneer zone. Puck's picked up by Chumley. Throws it back to Austin who fires on net, misses wide. I like what the Taken Pioneers did by right there. there. I like what the Pioneers did back there and forced them to kind of take shots because they wouldn't let them set something up. Big hip check there by the Pioneers. Davis Zarembinski. As the puck will remain in the Pioneer zone after the icing. Looks like Benilde St. Margaret's top line will be returning to the ice. That's Dan Lebowski on the faceoff. He'll win it for the Red Knights. Oh, and Johnny Austin shot deflected by Lobo rings off the pipe. And it's picked up by Hill Murray. That sound is music to a goalie's ears, ringing off the pipe. And I don't 
and oh, they're going to wave it off the goal. The, the net was dislodged before the guy, uh, the goal was off. scored. They waved it. It is not a goal. Under hockey rules, the net has to be securely on the peg when the goal goes on. If you take a watch, look here. The play comes into the zone. They get it across. The shot goes off. They wrap it around. Sprang goes back. When he goes back to save, he hits it off the peg. They get it in after the fact. That was very close. Uh, and, you know, that's just, uh, I, you know, for as much as he's done to keep this game uh, pretty close, uh, that was a very, very dangerous play by Andrew Sprang. Came out very wide and ended up being completely out of position. As you see right there, the net is already off by the time the net goes in. By MSHSL rules, no goal. The net has to be secure. And Hill Murray fans not happy. Red Knights caught a break. But as Dave said, I have to agree. Spring, you cannot be doing that. Totally out of character for any goalie. I don't care who you are. You can't go out to make that play and miss. Yep. And that would have been goal for Zach LaVale, the pioneer captain. As the faceoff is won there by TJ Moore. I'm bold to pick it up. Thrown out of the zone there by Moore. And dumped into the Red Knight zone. This is Heimbold again. He'll leave it for Graham. Graham checked in the inboards. And that one is picked up by Heimbold, thrown ahead to Moore. Bessie will pick it up now across the blue line. Shot and misses above the net as Moore is trouble getting up there. He's up now and off onto the bench. As we look here on Bessie's shot just across or just over the crossbar. Face off one by the Pioneers here as they look to set up on offense. Thrown into the Red Knight zone. This is Sprang playing it. And the puck will be back into the neutral zone as Hill Murray dumps it in again. It's picked up by Johnny Austin. He'll throw it ahead. The Pioneers are able to get it. And that puck is given away to Chase Jungles. Chase Jungles, and it's poked away from him. A great defensive play by the Pioneers. There's a thief in the building because he had his pocket pick. Skated up along the boards. Chased in by Ch Spencer Noss, excuse me. And once again, Hill Murray will retain possession. And Johnny Austin will actually push it back into the Hill Murray zone. Alec Bear with the puck. He's leveled, shot on by Spencer Noss, and he just goes wide. Thrown over by Ben Newhouse. This is Alec Bear with the puck. He'll dump it in, avoid a check, and now it's and now it's Hill Murray with the puck. Kept in by the Red Knights. That puck deflected and off to the side. Funk will throw it out of the zone as Johnny Austin's there to give chase. Newhouse back to Austin. Austin will skate it across the blue line. And there will be an offsides called on the Red Knights. So guys, now we are about five and a half minutes out. What are you seeing from Hill Murray here that is keeping the Red Knights from the offensive zone? You know, it's not so much what I'm seeing from Hill Murray, but what I'm seeing from the Red Knights. They just cannot, it's almost like they're not a team. They've never played together before. They're missing easy passes. They're not able to set up a rush. They look terrible defensively. And you know, the one thing coming to my mind right now is Atlanta Falcons. I know it's an entirely different sport, but I mean, they just collapse in the clutch and just not looking good. Jay? I think the Red Knights have a lot of big things to add up to, but I'm gonna say that the Hill Murray team is playing some excellent defense, forcing the Red Knights not not able to set something up on the outside, but also keeping them from the inside. So they're kind of pressuring them a little bit. And a big chance for Hill Murray. And that one just goes wide there for number 15, Mr. Colton Greeter. As this buck's taken ahead by Chumley. He's got Hickok with him. Chumley will shoot just wide of the net. And Patrick Graham will give chase to this puck. And he'll throw it. Good to number two, by, Chris Hickok. That's a good play by Patrick Graham there. Picked up by number seven, Zarembinski. 
He'll push the puck ahead. He's stick check there by Dan Lebowski as Graham will pick it up. Red Knights have a huge offensive opportunity as Lebowski will throw in a shot and unable to score as it's kicked away by Dugas. You know what I'm liking what I'm seeing from Dugas. He's really changed his game since the state championship game where he allowed five goals as Red Knight team. Now he's looking a lot more clutch. I wonder what he did over the summer programs. You know, one of the things I am noticing from the Red Knights team is that they seem almost afraid to hit. I mean, they, they have perfect opportun opportunities along the boards and even in the open ice, but they're just not pulling the trigger. I don't know if that's the style of play Coach Pauly is preaching or if that's just a mental thing, want to avoid getting overly physical, but they seem afraid to knock the player off the puck. And you know, that goes all the way to, to last year's championship game. One of the things that everyone was talking about was Hill Murray's ability to hit, and we're seeing it on full display tonight. As Spencer Noss tries to get in in the zone, tries to give it to Bessie. Bessie unable to corral it. You know, Hill Murray's been playing very physical hockey ever since I was probably a seventh grade. I remember them playing Edina where they shut them out three to nothing. That was an extremely physical game. And a very, very disagreeable offsides call there. The Red Knight faithful not happy with it. Bessie could have had an opportunity to score there. As we now have a face off with Austin. And Funk that's, in the neutral zone. That's Spencer Noss taking the face off. And Johnny Austin hitting the foot with the puck there. That's got to be a stinger. Pioneers have it in their own zone. That one's knocked ahead. Ben Newhouse will grab the puck. And they will wave off the icing call. Austin has it. And that puck intercepted. Huge. Huge opportunity missed. That could have been Funk's second right there. You know, it's like what I've been talking about. Missed opportunities by both teams. That's what's killing each team. Is they're not pulling the trigger at the right time and just bad luck, I guess. And now the Red Knights will have to have a big face off in their own zone. And, you know, going back to that Funk goal in the first period, these Red Knights have not looked the same no, since not then. At all. They've been, like I said earlier, missing passes collapsing in the offensive zone. Andrew Sprang, that's not number 30 on the ice. That is somebody else wearing his jersey because that's not the same guy we saw in the first period. Huge opportunity here for the Red Knights as Chumley throws one at the net. Hale would have been there. And now it's picked up by Graham and thrown into the Hill Murray zone. It's given chase by Zach Hale. Hale thrown into the boards by the other number nine. Thrown at the net, and it's almost deflected there by Hale. And you know, Jay, you mentioned it. John Dugas having a pretty big night here for the Pioneers. Talk about his game. You know, he's been making some a lot of key saves. I think we really have to get in with his defense. I think that's what's been helping him the most. You know, he might he must have changed his play a little bit, but I think his defense really stepped up big this year so far. Well, he seems to have a better mental game. He doesn't seem as rattled. He let in a goal early on. That doesn't really seem to be affecting him too much. Bessie will throw in at the net. That'll go over the top. And now it's getting dug for. The ref will signal it off. And we will have a face-off here upcoming in the Pioneer Zone as the ref's checking the uh, net there. This will be TJ Moore. He's been doing really well on faceoffs this year, winning the majority he's involved in. That's really playing a huge factor for the Red Knights and opportunities. Willie Brown will win the faceoff for the Pioneers as he wraps it around the boards. Almost intercepted by Lebowski and able to get there. This is this is number 28, Mr. Slattery. And he will shoot and score. And then Slattery there with the goal. He picked this corner and he got it. His fifth goal of the season. Hill Murray ahead two to one. Eight minutes left here in the second. You know that goal is not surprising at all. And number 21, Zach Lavelle with the big shot. And if I were a Red Knight fan right now, I'd be very worried. These Hill Murray Pioneers are very fired up, obviously looking for some redemption from that five to one embarrassment that they took in that state title game. Right now, it is the Red Knight team that is getting embarrassed. If you're a fan, 
You're disappointed. If you're a player, you're embarrassed. And if you're Ken Pauly, you are pissed. Yep. That's the right way to put it. I'll tell you one thing right now. I know there's 7.50 left in this period, but I would not want to be in the Red Knight locker room after this one. Oh, God, absolutely not. There is a firestorm coming after this one. I don't care if the Red Knights break out for three goals in this period. It, it, they need to change their strategy. They need to get their heads in this game because I don't know if they've, the Red Knights have been replaced with a peewee hockey team, but these are now the state champions on the ice here. Exactly. And this is number 10 for the Pioneers who will have it. He's pushed along the boards by Ben Newhouse. That would be Dustin Kruger. And now Chumley unable to handle it. He'll push it ahead. And this is number 18. Oh, and a big Ooh, hit there on Evan Fleming, the junior. Ouch. Chumley has it again. He'll skate it up the puck. Ice, excuse me. And Graham will go down to retrieve it. Icing is waved off there. As this second period has only 640 left. I can tell you, though, if the Red Knights keep playing this way, that is going to be a long six And a long. huge hit there given right back by Evan Fleming. There it is. He's looking for redemption now. If only the whole team could play like this. We're not a game. There will be a penalty uh, against the Red Knights. Not sure where it came from here. That'll be on Chase Jungles. As that we, is his second of the night. As we look here on the hit on Fleming. Wow. Boom, head up, shoulder down. That's a clean hit. You know, the Hillbury fans really need to articulate. All right. As we look for <laughs> number 23, TJ Moore taking the draw in the Red Knight zone. Big hit there on Ben Newhouse as they look from the top of the key. Number 27, good block there by Moore. And it's kept in the Red Knight zone. Another block here. Number 27 will take a shot here for the Pioneers. That puck is kicked around and no one really has possession on it. The Pioneers will take it behind the net. Number 17, Willie Brown has it. Given back to Laval, back to Brown. And that puck is bounced off of Becker's stick. And the Pioneers will have to get out of there. I'll have to start by setting some whole new off, but Red Knights are pressing them outside, so they won't be able to. 1.14 left on this power play for the Pioneers as Johnny Austin will clear it. Dugas behind his own net to get the puck. And you know, one of the things, folks, that I'm seeing right now is just a real lack of aggressiveness on the Red Knights' part. Uh, not really going for a whole lot here. Uh, they look lethargic, uh, if I were to give it a word. Ooh, good use of vocab, David. Thank you, Peter. And there will be a penalty call there on Grant Bessie as number not on Grand Bessie, David. Yes, excuse Grand me. Bessie. Oh, excuse me. The penalty is on number 27, Sam Becker, for a hit on Grand Bessie. You can see there blatant interference. Uh, correction, that'll be Willie Brown. He hit Bessie. Excuse me. Oh. Good work. Uh, all right. So now we'll have some four on four action for the second time in, in this game. Jungles unable to, excuse me, that's Alec Bear unable to win the faceoff. And it's skated up by the Pioneers. Intercepted by Bear. That'll slow things down for a little bit before Hill Murray is able to generate the turnover. And that one's thrown in front of the net just outside the reach there of number 15 for the Pioneers. That would be Mr. Greeter. And that puck is thrown ahead to uh, nobody. I am very, very close to going up to the intercom and paging the Benilde St. Margaret's defense because they don't seem to be in the building right now, you guys. Long pass for Bear, and it's just out of his reach, unable to get the breakaway chance. And there's some little overly aggressive there by Hill Murray there. Just shoves Bear for no reason. I think there should have been a penalty there. And as you can see, just out of his reach, Duke is able to cover it up. That would have been an easy goal had the pass been a little bit better. 
One second left on this penalty on the Red Knights, so Jungles will get out of the box here in one second as T.J. Moore looks to take the face off. Bessie grabs it and is in the corner with it. And this is an excellent opportunity for the Red Knights to change their momentum. They are killer on the power play. Let's see if what they get going here. Austin has it over to Lebowski. Lebowski into Bessie in the corner. He'll skate it around, throw it back to Austin. Over to Moore. Moore will skate it in towards the back of the net. You know, they're going to have to hurry this up. They're running out of time. And the shot score! Johnny Austin, and it's deflected into the net by Spencer Noss. Huge goal for the Red Knights. Three minutes and 56 seconds left in this period. Oh, and that is a momentum changer if I have ever heard of one. There's nothing better than getting the goal when you need it. And just a beautiful play. Look at this. Gets the goal. Johnny Austin, excellent screen in front of Dugas. Dugas, he has no idea where that puck is. Beautiful, beautiful. Grab that puck and give it to him because he should hang that one on his wall. That was an amazing goal and a great way to hopefully turn this game around in favor of the Red Knights. Watch it again. I don't know if uh, Nas even got a piece of that. I think that was just top shelf from Johnny Austin. Either way, it was a great screen by Nas. Great awareness to get in the zone. Hey, they started off the second period looking terrible. Let's see how this changes things. Well, hey, there's, there's that Red. got to keep up that. They got to keep up this momentum they now have going for him. The well, worst possible thing is to let Hill Murray respond with another goal. Well, that was that was a little glimpse of the team you've been trying to page all night. And now Moore has it. He'll skate up the puck. TJ. Excuse me, that's uh, Lebowski who's unable to keep his footing. Lost an edge there. Comes out of the zone. And now number 21 has it for the Pioneers. But you can give it back to Newhouse. Look at this team. They got that goal. Look at the energy they have now. Bessie will leave it for more. He'll shoot it. Yeah, and look, that shot is blocked. Look at how much things have changed. They're playing with a purpose almost, it seems. They're not just trying to keep up. Now it looks like they're hungry. And an offsides call here. This will come out. You know, I think, I think that um, that goal really did change the Red Knights momentum. Their passes are getting better. Their defense is starting to force Hill Murray out. It looks like Hill Murray's kind of lost their edge. We'll see what happens as they get inside. This will be Hale taking the face off in the neutral zone. He wins that. There's a Austin. Nice pass right there. We'll give it to Hickok, and he loses it. Given right back to the Red Knights, and Austin will throw it into the zone, played behind by Dugas. And now there's a two-on-two -two chance here for Hill Murray as they start breaking. Some speed on the outside. He tries to force it back to the middle. Almost a huge hit by Zach Hale. And now there's some uh, rough play going on for the puck. And Hill Murray is able to keep it in the zone. Danced off of number 22, Dan Dolan stick. Back to number seven, that would be Zarembinski. Chased into the zone by Tyler Funk. Austin uh, and him are battling for it. Picked up by Hale. Hickok will take a vicious hit there into the board. And another huge hit by Seth Chumley. That's something that we haven't been talking about tonight is Chumley has been absolutely vicious in some of his hits. Uh, that would be Heimbold stumbling there as the Pioneers have it behind the net. It's given up. Chumley will pick it up. Red Knights desperately looking for a line change here as Hickok will corral it. He's got Hale. Excuse me, that's Nas. He'll throw it at the net. That'll just be deflected off. Jungle's able to intercept it out of the air. That's picked up by Nas. Nas has it, dances around a defender. He slides, strips, and is unable to do anything with the puck. Nas the water bottle off. Looked like he was going to get a little good one-on-one -on -one chance, trying to get a good wraparound. Just jam it right in between the goalie and the pipe. Face off coming in the neutral zone. 132 left to go here in the second period, all tied up at two. So you got Spencer Nash trying to take face off of the Red Knights. He'll win it. Bucks given to Graham. Graham will put it in the Pioneer zone. It's given chase by Chase Jungles. Jungles trying to get it. It pops out to Nas. Nas there. Bear with a great one-time shot. 
And they will call it off. They'll say Dugas had enough possession to freeze it. And now some uh, extracurricular activities here going on between Mr. Sam Becker and Chase Jungles. That's the story of the game, some extracurricular activities definitely after the whistle. You can tell how much these teams do hate each other. And I did like uh, uh, Alec Bear trying to go far side in the net, had it open. I think he stumbled a little bit, unable to put it away. I think that was a great play by both teams. I think Alec Bear did a wonderful job trying to get it in there, but just couldn't finish the clutch move. So I can't think I do it. Nas will dance around. Graham will throw it at the net and unable to shoot and score as Bear will get the puck again. Bear has it. He's getting roughed up a little bit, and it's picked up by Becker. Becker unable to hold on. And that one's intercepted by Heimbold. Heimbold trying to skate it in, unable to do so. And now there is a three-on-two opportunity here coming up for the Pioneers. Number 21, Lavelle going after it. Oh, that's it away. And that puck is deflected up into the netting. Good break there for the Red Knights. 42 seconds left in this second period that has been a very topsy-turvy one at that. Guys, what have you have liked and disliked from this period? What I liked is how the physicality has kept up for both teams. I think that's been really good. What I don't like, the missed opportunities, because there still are a lot of them. You have to capitalize on those if you want to win. Peter? What I like is BSM's play after that goal. What I hate is everything BSM did before that goal. I mean, they looked terrible, they were slow, they couldn't get anything going. Now, they're playing with an edge. They're mad. Um, I think that goal was a momentum shift, and I like the way they're looking now. So we'll have to see if uh, Coach Paul is able to give a nice, good pep talk to the Red Knights so they can carry that momentum over into the third period. Looks like we'll be headed there in just a few seconds. Lebowski will chase after it. He might have a shot here, and he's blatantly tripped. There will be a penalty on the Pioneers. And that and is... That, that call wasn't even arguable. He, that, that was an obvious trip right there. He gets right inside, you, takes Lobo's feet from underneath him. Anytime you're deliberately targeting the feet right here, you can see Lobo, toe and toe, the guy just goes for his feet. Not only is that a penalty, but it's just a stupid play. I mean, what happens if you're down by the boards? He trips, that could end very badly. That's an obvious call. You know, and with six seconds left in the second, that means the Pioneers are gonna start shorthanded for a while to begin the next period. So we'll have to see how they're able to respond with that. That's an excellent point. Momentum just keeps swinging the Red Knights' way. Huge face-off here for Nas. Let's see if they can get something. He will win it. Austin will look, fire, and miss wide. And that will be what ends the second period as the Red Knights able to tie it up 2-2. Two to two. Uh, Guys, your impressions? I think you just mentioned some of them. You know, again, Hill Murray's been playing with great physicality, but there's a lot of missed opportunities. For the Red Knights, they need to find their momentum, which is what they found after that goal. They have to carry that over into the next period. The Pioneers, they have to kill that penalty, and they have to capitalize on those opportunities. Peter? BSM needs to adjust, come out stronger, come out fired up. They need to score on this power play. No questions. They need to look better in the second period. That's the key. Good point, Peter. Stick with us, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be back in just a few for your third and potentially final period. And now, another adventure with Savings Man. Look, honey, the neighbors just bought a big screen TV. Hey, I just got a bonus at work. Maybe we should get one, too. Hold on there. Savings man. Using your bonus to secure your future by paying down debt or saving is a better way to go. Well, I declare you're right, savings man. Stay ahead by choosing to save. And don't worry about keeping up with the Joneses. But their name is Johnson. For more tips and tools, visit choosetosave.org today. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Class 2A rematch here on December 8th as the Benilde St. Margaret's Red Knights take on the Hill Murray Pioneers. Uh, shot total so far in this one, Hill Murray up 21 to 18 over the Red Knights. Uh, the score, however, is knotted up 2-2. Uh, as always, joined alongside Peter Best and Jake Copeland. Boys, your thoughts on this third period? Well, I think the Pioneers have to start capitalizing on opportunities. The Red Knights, I think Coach Pauly must have told them something good to keep up that intensity, but we'll have to see. And Andrew Sprang, the BSM goaltender, he has to come out with the form he had in the first period. 
He was great. He was on top of the puck. Didn't let any rebounds out. Second period, whole different story. He looked awful. So if we get first period Sprang, the Red Knights have a solid chance. If not, it's not looking good. And that would be number 28, Mitch Slattery. Uh, shot deflected by Johnny Austin. Remember, the Red Knights uh, got a power play going here. Only uh, now it's a mini 22 left in it as Bessie takes a shot from the slot, and that is blocked. Good defensive play there by the uh, Pioneers. We're actually seeing how evenly matched both these teams are. The Red Knights having a tough schedule this year, being an independent conference. Last week they played number six, Burnsville. This week they're playing number five, Hill Murray. So it's going to be a, it's a tough test early for the Knights. But I think that's a good thing for the team. Uh, it shows how they really do stack up in the state. If you're playing cupcake teams the entire season, you may be better than you actually are. And another two-on-one opportunity for Hill Murray. Nice defensive play there by Johnny Austin. He's been great all night, has a goal to his name, too. That was the big tying goal. Uh, great help by Spencer Noss as well in that goal as Sprang will play it. And Sprang, get back in your net, buddy. You know, mentioning what Peter said, I'll go back to the 2007 season. Rozo was a team that was 29 and all heading into the playoffs, but they finished a measly fourth, losing to BSM in the consolation game. And the reason is they were playing very poor teams up north where they were, so I think it really, it really depends who you play early in the season and who you play at all to define your team. A nice blocker save there by Sprang. Thought that was headed for the back of the net. Good save there by Sprang as Ben Newhouse will skate it up and dump it in for the Red Knights. Uh, a very ugly power play to say the least. Yeah, it looked like Hill Murray kept that mostly in the Red Knights zone. That's not what you want when you have more people than the other team. They're short-handed. Picked up by Bessie there. Zach Hale will pick it up. He has it in the corner. Close to being taken away by the Pioneers. Now it's picked up by Bear. Bear will throw it for Jungles, unable to capitalize on anything, and now push behind the net. You know, I don't let that pass. I think he should have just taken the shot. I was amazed he still had the puck, but that pass was just not the right decision at that time. He should have just gone for it, seeing if he can do something about it. Sprang almost makes a costly mistake there by almost giving it up to the Hill Murray player and leaving his net. You know, I don't, I don't care the situation. If you're a player, I'd rather take a terrible shot than no shot at all. Yeah. you got to pull the trigger at some point. Well, the great exactly. one always said, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. I think a lot of these goals are coming off the easy goals, having someone screen in front of the goaltender, you shooting it and then bouncing it right in to kind of confuse the goaltender. That's where we've seen a lot of these shots. The, uh, the Spencer Nas goal was pretty much Johnny Austin's assist, which should have been his goal, because he was the one who shot the puck. Uh, and you know, one thing that's really concerning to me is the amount of turnovers the Red Knights have given. That's how Hill Murray has had so many chances, two on one, three on two. I don't care what the ratio is in this game. Two Red Knights really have to tighten up here with their passing and their puck handling. So Red Knights will switch from Hickok to number 34, Seth Chumley for the faceoff. Chumley will win it for the Red Knights. And of course, the game reset here. The first BSM goal coming from TJ Moore, followed by a power play goal for Hill Murray from Tyler Funk. And then a Hill Murray goal from Zach Lavelle, and then a BSM power play goal at the end of the second from Spencer Knox. And that's how we got from where we were to where we are now. 13.48 here left in the third period as Chumley will skate it along the red nine into the Pioneer zone. He fires a shot that's deflected, thrown at the net. Unable to get anything out of it as it's picked up by Becker, and he'll work it through the neutral zone and throw it into the red nights. You got to be careful if you're spraying. You need to stay in your box. He's been leaving an awful lot to get po checked on the puck, but two times already in this period, it's been very costly for him. You know, the, the more I've watched Sprang, the less and less confident I am in him. I mean, he is all over the place. Even when the puck is coming along the sideboards, he feels the need to go out and touch it. As a goaltender, you cannot do that. The, pro yeah. the problem with him is, is he's very hot and cold. We saw him Three stop two. a, a two-on-zero. Oh. And an easy goal there from Zach Laval, his second of the night, puts Hill Murray ahead three to two. And that's exactly the thing I was talking about. Andrew Sprang, I mean, hey, it was a great setup by Hill Murray, but I mean, you gotta put some of that on him. Look at how far out he is there. And he goes too far to the side and he just doesn't have time to readjust. Great setup by Hill Murray. I put more of that on the defense, not only giving up that turnover, Right there, you know, the Red Knights, you know, they, 
to give up the puck again right there in the neutral zone. And Hill Murray finally capitalizing on those opportunities. I know, Jay, you mentioned that fact earlier. And the Red Knights now, again, have to play behind. That is not the way you want to start out this third period. You never want to play from behind. You don't want to have to be forcing that goal. And unfortunately, now that's the situation the Red Knights are in. As we get a stoppage in play here because the puck went over the boards, he's going to face off here. Captain Grand Bessie. As he wins the face off. And now it's pushed back into the Pioneer zone. And thrown ahead to number 19. Picked up by Heimbold. And you know, one of the things I'm noticing right now, just looking at these turnovers, is that the Red Knights, they aren't having crisp passes. They are just lobbing it towards each other, and it, there's no forcefulness behind it, and that's why Bill Murray has had these chances. Like right now, right in front of the net, number 19, Mr. Matt Litterler, had that opportunity, danced off his stick, and again, a lucky break for the Red Knights, as Lo Bosky will pick it up and dance into the zone. Throws it in front of the net. Bessie had it, almost a shot opportunity there. Unable to get anything. Lebowski loses his footing. More to Bessie into the zone. Grant Bessie, a surprisingly quiet night as he hits somebody into the boards. Uh, I haven't seen a lot out of him. Zero goals and zero assists. That's a, uh, and that's a uh, miss opportunity by Bessie there. Uncharacteristic of him. Those are usually, that's his bread and butter. He makes those. Something's off with his game tonight, and something's off with pretty much everyone's game tonight, looks like. And another uncharacteristic pass in front of the Red Knight Knight. You don't do that. Yeah, we, you know, the Red Knights, they have not looked like themselves all night tonight. And with 11.15 left to go in the third period, they've got to get something started here. And it might be with Alec Bear, the freshman. You do not want to be playing catch up until the very last minute. Heroics are great. I love a good last second goal. But that's not how you want to play. Yeah. As this puck is picked up here by Spencer Noss, he'll go into the Pioneer zone and shoot it at the net, unable to come up with anything as that puck is picked up again. And here's Slattery with the puck. And nobody in front of the net for him to pass to. Battle for it along the boards with Laval of Hill Murray. A shot on net. And Spring had it in his glove. The puck was ticked away and thrown to the back of the, or behind the net, excuse me, as Heimbold will push it back. And Peter, you mentioned it earlier. These guys aren't looking like a team. They're looking like some peewee hockey players out there. They just do not look good. I don't know if they psych themselves up too much for this game. But whatever it is, they are not the team that we're used to seeing. That's ridiculous. How can you spring? And that Andrew was Sprang coming out of the net, losing his stick, getting tied up by some of his own players there. Just ridiculous. If I am a head coach, Ken Pauly, I am pissed right now. And right now, Hill Murray dancing around Red Knight defenders. That one tried to throw it over to Mitch Slattery. And Hill Murray, it'd be interesting to see the stat about puck control. Uh, and I guarantee you, Hill Murray has had much more of it as that pass is beautifully put on for number 16 of Hill Murray. He'll dance and the net comes loose. That would be number 16, Mr. Josh French on that one. And once again, Hill Murray, plenty of opportunities, unable to capitalize them. And guys, I don't think it's too far-fetched to say this game should probably be 5-2 Hill Murray. I think that's exactly right. I think both teams have had a lot of missed opportunities. Neither team really came into this game pretty prepared to play, but Hill Murray so far shown a little more advantage than the Red Knights. We'll have to see if they can make a late minute push and actually have the want to win this game. You know, it's hard living up to champions. Most teams don't repeat or even come close to repeating. They'll make it to the playoffs and be an early exit. But you got to pull it together somehow and try for something, especially a team that has been this, this excellent in recruiting to have a loss of Justin Qualley, a loss of eight defenders, and to be able to get key players like that, you have to have chemistry. And uh, just an update, folks, some motioning on the bench as Paul Lundberg stands up. I don't know if it's out of edginess or 
Or maybe Coach Paul is thinking about putting in a sub. Paul and Lundberg, of course, a first-year varsity player. He is a senior, as well as Andrew Sprang. But uh, I'm sure he's got to be wondering if he's going to get put in because Sprang is looks uncharacteristic. I think the whole team is looking yeah. uncharacteristic. Bessie now has it in the corner. And he tries to get away from some Hill Murray guys and unable to do so. Deflection by TJ, but to no avail, he'll take it up. Oh, there's some good red knight defense there to stop it. Puck kept in there by TJ Moore, and it's forced back down. This should be an icing call, and it will, and the Red Knights will have the puck in the Pioneer zone. Guys, what have been the real downfall here for the Red Knights as we look at 8.35 here in the third period, down 3-2? to two. You could say defense. You could say passing. I'm going to say chemistry. I think this team was not ready to play this game, and they don't really know each other. It's early in the season. They still have time to form a bond and get something together because this is high school. Everyone goes to the playoffs. But still, you guys have, you know, they're number one in the polls right now. They have to do something. I'm going to say Grant Bessie. I mean, if your best player doesn't show up, isn't playing with the emotion, the passion needed, if he isn't making the big plays, then how are you going to trust the rest of the team to show up and make those? The fact that their best player has not shown up and done anything of note, that's not a good sign for this team. I'm going to go along and say that all the captains need to step up. Lebowski's had a lot of missed opportunities. TJ's the one that's been looking really good. And he's he's the captain most people neglect to remember. That's a nice save by Dugas there. And a, a small little scrap in the zone. Gets broken up. We'll have a faceoff coming here to the goalie's right. And a nice pass there. I don't think Bear was ready for it from uh, Spencer Knox. And honestly, guys, I think I think Spencer Noss has been the MVP here for the Red Knights in this game. He's been all over the ice, very aggressive. And I think you could say he was a nice pickup in the offseason. Oh, of course. Transferred from Blake, of course. He got four goals in his premier game against uh, Burnsville on Thursday. And he's just looked phenomenal tonight. And if I'm Spencer Noss, I'm pretty happy with my game. Even though your team's behind, I'm confident in myself. Yeah, that's one of the things people take away from games like this that get really ugly. I don't care if the Red Knights do end up winning this thing. I'm, I'm going to be pissed if I'm Ken Pauly. As well you should be because his team has just not been his team. Whichever team wins this game, it's a garbage win. It's not a, it's not a oh, we beat the state champions or oh, we still show that we are the state champions. It's a we made mistakes. We made missed opportunities. We were too uh, aggressive, and we didn't know who we were. And I think the thing of it is, is that mistakes are fine. Every team makes mistakes, every sports team. But they've been the exact same mistakes all through the game. And in a game of hockey, it's a game of strategy and adjustment. You can't play the same way. You're not playing the same way in the first as you're playing in the third. And BSM has not adjusted at all. I would feel bad for someone coming into this game for the first time trying to assess both teams. You're not really going to assess anything. The Red Knights have not looked like this when they beat Moorhead 6-1 or when they beat Burnsville 7-4. They just looked like they weren't ready to show up. Same with Hill Murray. Hill Murray's had a lot of missed opportunities. They don't look like the people who reached the state title game last year. And now the puck is into the Pioneer zone. Hickok will chase after it. And he'll intercept the passes. It's given back to Hale. Hale trying to make something happen. Chumley will throw one at the net. And unable to get anything out of it as that puck is cleared. Icing waved off as Patrick Graham will chase after it. Throws it ahead to Chumley, who passes it over to Hickok. He's nudged off the puck. Zach Hale will pick it up. And shot and blocked by a pioneer. And again, good work by the Pioneers on breaking down the Red Knight attack. I mean, it hasn't been strong tonight, but still, when they get a formation set up, the Pioneers are able to break it down. And you know, guys, would you honestly say that this is more like a trap game for the Red Knights, or it has been a trap game? You know, you come from last time you played, when you win 5-1, to one, do you think they came in with a little bit of an overconfidence? I think that, that is one of their bigger problems. Now they're behind, they have to play. They are playing a little more aggressive. You can see a little, you know, after the whistle activity, you can see them beating themselves up, making mistakes like this. So yeah, I think they came in with the wrong mentality. They need to come in every week saying, you know, there's a good chance our opponents can beat us, but we know that we can play our best, we'll win. 
You know, I talked to Coach Pauly at the beginning of the season, and he said, this is a team that does not have trouble scoring goals. I mean, they're, they're a purely offensive team, and yet here we are seeing a team that, guess what? They're having trouble scoring goals. That's a good point there, Peter. I'd say they're having trouble doing everything, scoring goals, capitalizing on opportunities, playing defense, passing the puck. And, and right there, you can see it is just awful play in the neutral zone. They are giving away chances to Hill Murray, and Hill Murray's taking them up on it, and it's just fortunate that they haven't been able to capitalize on more of them. You know, and that's really the thing. Hockey games are won in the neutral zone. Who can get through the best? Who has the best strategic play in that zone? And the Red Knights have just fallen flat. They have nothing going on in the neutral zone. TJ Moore in on the draw in the Red Knights zone. That's the one thing that's going well for them is face-offs. The Red Knights have been doing excellent on those. Puck played behind for Sprang. Austin will pick it up. He fans on that shot. Number 15 has it for the Pioneers. Sprang can't locate the puck. Hill Murray has a bunch of players in front and unable to come up with anything. And now it's fired again by Hill Murray. And the puck is finally cleared up to Grant Bessie. It's a two-on-two -two here with him and TJ Moore. And Bessie is leveled by a Pioneer player. Pioneers again have a nice opportunity going. And you get back to it, you know, uh, Peter, you mentioned it, not a lot of physicality on the Red Knights part, and I think it's been one of their big downfalls. Definitely. If you can't hit, if you can't get the momentum to swing your way, which most of the time comes from those big hits, then you're not going to have much hope of getting the puck, of getting the room you need to make the plays you need, to get the goals you need. I want to go back to that. I want to go back to that quote-unquote pass by Johnny Austin. That just shows the weaknesses of both teams in that span of 30 seconds. The Hill Murray Pioneers should have capitalized on that easy opportunity. The Red Knights should have known better and should have played smarter. Agreed. As we got a face-off coming up here from the offensive line. Let's take another look at this play. Just total downfall by the Red Knights. Sprang stops it. Can't figure out where it is. It's between his legs. If a Pioneer had been there, that thing is in. Four to two. This thing could very well be over. Yeah, that was, that was pretty much a bad play for both teams. Again, Pioneers can't capitalize on the opportunities. Red Knights making mistakes on defense. You know what, it's interesting. One of the things I've heard from a few of the Red Knights players in practice is that their goaltender, Andrew Sprang, has a bit of a hot head, and it's really easy to get inside his head. So I'm not wondering if these two goals, or three goals, excuse me, against him, are getting inside Andrew Sprang's head and throwing him off his game a little bit. Can we start Nas with a couple of decent chances there for the Red Knights as Dugas will glove another one off of Nas. We saw that. Um we saw that last year. Andres Jacket was the starting goalie for the majority of the season, but he was replaced by Pauly in the playoffs, either for Pauly's aspect of clutch performance or Andres' hot head after being scored on multiple times. And now we have a faceoff with Alec Bear against Littler. And Littler will win the draw. Excuse me, that's Willie Brown. Uh, net jarred loose, and the refs will find it. 427 left to go here. Red Knights have to get something on the board. At what if you're Coach Pauly, at what point do you say, okay, I've got to pull Sprang? Uh, I think you I think you look at the minute mark and you know, I don't know. I mean if you can really be trustworthy with this team for any more time than that, you look I mentioned in the neutral zone play, they're giving away chances. In fact they're gift wrapping them for the pioneers, so I, I'd say a minute. I think that's what you have to look out here is more will take the face off. If I'm Coach Pauly, I don't pull Andrew Sprang. I'm going to keep him. I want to pull my defense and figure that out. I'll, I mean, I'll be honest. A lot of those goals are Sprang's fault, but if you look at how Sprang played in the first, he played extremely well. Right here, you can see, where's his defense? You can't be trusted alone with that. 2-1-0, when he stopped them, that was amazing. Will that ever happen again? Probably not. Four minutes now left, and we will have a draw in the Red Knight zone after another odd man rush here for the Pioneers. And that's really been the subject of tonight's game. Odd man rushes. BSM's had two, maybe three. Hill Murray has had at least a dozen. Yeah. 
this is another one of those games where you can't place blame on anyone. You can't say, oh, Grant Bessie didn't show up, or oh, Andrew Sprang didn't play well, or oh, you know, this pass was missed, these shots were blocked. It's one where you say, even if you were on the bench for the majority of the game, unless you're Spencer Knox, and even then, he still made some mistakes, it's everyone's fault. Yeah, and you know, I'm watching the Red Knights on the ice here, and they just look lost. And in fact, I, I dare to say they just don't care. I mean, look at the careless passing there. Nice poke check away from the Pioneer by TJ Moore, as Bessie will bring it up the ice. He'll get inside the defensive zone and throws it at the net for nothing. That's a little reminiscent of his own self, but one of his line, he should have been there to pick that up and dump it right in. You can't be a one-man show at this point. If you try to do everything by yourself, you're not going to get the goal. You have to rely on your teammates. Even if they're not making passes, you've got to make something happen using them. 3.13 now left to go in this third period as the Red Knights try and desperately to get another goal. And a very futile effort so far as offsides will be called. And you know what? At this point, if I'm being realistic, looking at how the Red Knights have played, they've already lost this thing. I don't see them getting that garbage goal late. Even if they win, they've lost. Yep. And Put one player way. who we haven't talked about uh, yet is John Dugas. He's been absolutely brilliant in the head for the Pioneers. We've got to give a lot of credit to him. He oh. looks phenomenal. He has been one of the shining stars among many on the Hill Murray roster tonight. You know, we didn't get a we didn't get a chance to see how he played in the regular season. We only got to see him in the playoffs. But the truth is, that's all what matters. The regular season is great, but in high school, you can lose all your games. You'll still get the chance to play in a playoff game. So I like what Dugas has done tonight, but he's got to keep that through the playoffs and play more clutch if this team wants to repeat as state contender. Agreed. And again, on this goal, or on the shot, sorry, you get a shot off, but where is the secondary scoring? There is nobody in front. Hale should have been in front to whack at that rebound, try to put it in. You're not going to score every time on a one-time. It's yeah. ridiculous to think that you need the garbage goals, you need the secondary scoring. Yeah, and you know, that's the one thing. They haven't been crashing the net uh, all night. You know, not a lot of, you know, you look at Hill Murray's offense attack. There have been plenty of occasions where guys are just rushing the net on Sprang, and they've been really capitalizing that way. And I'd, I'd tell the Red Knights to do the exact same thing. Crash to the net. Go get that goal. At Pucks Loose, it's yours. Grab it and shoot it. And at the 2.50 mark, uh, Ken Pauly, the Red Knights head coach, takes a timeout, adjusts his strategy. Jay, if you're Pauly, what are you telling those guys down there? If I'm Pauly, I'm telling those guys to always be around for the puck. Yeah. I'm telling them, I don't care, you know, man coverage, zone coverage, I'm stealing that for football, I don't care. Wherever you see the puck, I want five white helmets going to that puck. And I want them going to the south to get into the net of John Dugas. You have two minutes left. There's still time to score. This game's not put away yet. I said that last week, and they were up 7-4 to four <laughs> against Burnsville. So there's still time. You need to follow the puck. Dave? Well, I think I think if I'm Coach Pauly, I'm telling exactly what Jay said. you got to go after that puck. Uh, and once again, Chris passing. You know, he's got his first line out there. Put the puck in the net. That's all you got to do. Shoot it at the net and put it in. You know, I mean, that's that's all you got to say to your guys. Is start scoring goals. That's what you're good at. Whoever wins this game, I do not want to be at the practice the next day because it would just be awful. Newhouse now with the puck. He'll throw it at the net, and that's easily taken away by the Pioneers as Austin will play the puck back in the Red Knight zone. He pushes it ahead. That'll be Bessie who will help the puck into the Pioneer zone. It's picked up there by Becker. Austin tried to keep it in the zone, unable to, as Newhouse will play it along the boards, and Bessie will push it back in. They need to get some physics going and say, you know, if I hit this off the boards, it'll bounce this way at this much speed. So if I have one player in front of the goal and I hit it off his shoulder pad, it should go in, assuming Dugas isn't covering the whole net. <laughs> and Lebowski will shoot it at the net, unable to come up with anything, as once again the Pioneers are there to intercept. Yeah, the Red Knights, they can't even gain control. I mean, at this point, any shot is a good shot. I don't care if you're at the red line. Yeah. You know, after this game, there's going to be a lot to think about by both coaches. Um, if I'm Hill Murray, I'm going to take away that our goaltender is playing really well and our defense is stepping up, but we're missing a lot of opportunities. Maybe I want to change some things up on the line. If I'm the Red Knights, I want to talk about passing and talk about possibly replacing players such as goalie Andrew Sprang. 
And there's a great chance we could see a look from other senior Paul Lundberg. Number 10 for the Pioneers giving chase to that one. Again, Andrew Sprain is seen too far out of his zone. He needs to stay in the net. It's not your job to get the puck. It's your job to stop the puck. Exactly. Now with his second line out there, Ken Pauly. And that would be Bear, Nas, and Jungles. And now Nas has the puck. He'll throw it at the net, give it to Bear, and unable to come up with anything. We got just under a minute and a half here. 3 2 Pioneers. Red Knights looking for a last minute savior goal. And I think they might have one or two more rushes left in them with only a minute 17 left. And now you have a draw coming in the Pioneer zone. And Peter, you mentioned it is that time to full spring now. Yeah, we're going to want to keep an eye on him, see if he gets pulled off. For those of you who may be more unfamiliar with the rules, if you pull off your goaltender, you get an extra attacker, and it looks like Sprang is going off. So it will be six on five here for the final minute 17. The Red Knights, they need that goal. They got to get it. I don't know what Ken Pauly's strategy is going to be, but let's see if it pays off for him. Huge face off coming up here. This is really ballsy by Ken Pauly just to remove his goalie and add the extra man. Sure, it's a minute 17, but you know I might wait a little longer to do that. But well, this is a really ballsy strategy. If he doesn't score a goal here, this game's over. As we have had two play three players, excuse me now, from each side kicked out of the faceoff circle. That's uncharacteristic. Oh, and big takeaway there by Johnny Austin is DJ Moore will pick it up. Nas with the puck. Will shoot it at the net, unable to come up with anything. Nas regains control. The Red now it's Lebowski trying to get it. They have to set something up. They can't just be taking random whack to the puck. You have to set something up. You know, although it is true that you should take as many shots as you can. Desperation does not equal salvation. And what kind of defensive move is that? Just terrible by the Red Knights. Luckily, they're able to stop that. 40 seconds left now in this one as Nas will give chase to it. Luck, a very common theme in this game. Picked up by Bessie. He'll give it up. And, and a great save by great Dugas. Save by Dugas. Holy moly. 24 seconds left. Red Knights whacking away at it. Dugas has it covered up. No goal. And hit it. Oh, there's some hitting going on right there. Grant Bessie is getting upset. 17 seconds. Dugas able to keep it in the blue paint. Wow. I'm surprised they didn't call a penalty. Look at this after the play. Everyone's jumping on each other. This isn't a fumble. This isn't football. You can't jump on each other. <laughs> and I wasn't sure if that puck was jarred loose and the ref was waving that off or what. And as you can see, some extracurriculars going on down there. This is a, this is a must go situation for BSM if they even want to continue to play they this game. They need to win the face off, maintain possession, set something up, and get the shot off. They have 17 seconds. Hey, do you believe in miracles? Red Knights unable to win the faceoff. Puck goes down. They're able to keep it in the zone for not very long. Hill Murray with the puck. Go kill off time here. Get the empty netter. 4-2. Hill Murray wins. Four seconds left. No longer undefeated are the Red Knights as they fall to 2-1. and one. Well, Hill Murray will move on to 4-0 and oh and remain undefeated. Hey, there are going to be some shakeups in the polls tonight, gentlemen. Uh, yeah, and some of the fans are going to go beat the traffic right now as the Red Knights will fall 4-2, to two, barring some sort of random shot from random, Hill Murray. Ran, <laughs> but you know what? Random two shots from Benil. This is a game the Red Knights deserve to lose. Yep. Yes. At no point in this game did they look like they wanted it. Exactly. This, Hill Murray looked like they prepared for this game for weeks. BSM. I don't even think half the players knew they had a game tonight. Pretty sure they didn't. Pretty sure they didn't. And it's over. And it's over. Hill Murray wins 4-2. Green will get jerseys the redemption. storm the ice. Look at Seth. Shumley's trying to get into it. On behalf Last of on the side. On behalf of Park TV 16. On, on behalf of Jay Copeland, David Nelson, I'm Peter Best. Thanks for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. Red Knights fall 4-2.